This is Next Radio 2017 with Broadcast Bionics. Good afternoon, my name is Joe Harland and I am Head of Visual Radio for the BBC. And I'm Sam Bailey, editor of Radio 1's TV channel in BBC iPlayer. And today, unusually for us, we're not here to talk about the reliably hot potato of filming the radio. Instead, we are proud to be able to tell you about an idea we had. An idea that in just 12 days' time will be on DAB radio and available online. A three-day radio station that we believe will be amongst the best radio stations you've ever heard. That radio station is Radio 1 Vintage. Radio 1 Vintage is a spin-off from Radio 1, but crucially not a station aimed at the current Radio 1 listener. Why? Because we know that young audiences do not care that their favourite radio station has heritage. They will not listen any more because that radio brand is old. They certainly won't have any more interest in a radio station purely because it's clocked up as many laps of the sun as their grandparents. Radio 1 is a station that you listen to, we hope, for... 15 or 20 years, and then, if we're doing our jobs right at least, you gradually move away from, until ultimately it gets to a stage where it sounds so alien you can't believe how much they've ruined it, and will wax lyrical in the pub or on internet forums about how crap it is now, and how much better it was in your day. But for some reason, your kids still love it. Very much like everybody has their Doctor Who, everybody has their Radio 1. People that grew up listening to Radio 1 care about it, and they really, really care. For the past 50 years, people have lived, loved, schooled, journeyed, studied and worked to the sounds of the nation's favourite. And so Radio 1 Vintage is about the BBC celebrating with them the radio station they used to love. The shows and DJs they went on family holidays to see, that they fell in love to, left home to, got married to and had children to, whether that's five years ago or 50 Unlike television, which can delight its audiences with repeat shows, music radio is always supposed to be now. Radio 1 Vintage will, for three days from the 30th of September, change that by very much focusing on them. 50 shows in 50 hours celebrating 50 years. Each show a compilation of archive material and vintage tracks, lovingly cut together to make it sound, quite simply, like you've turned the radio on into the past. So today, in the spirit of Radio 1 Vintage, we just thought we'd share with you some of the wonderful radio that we've uncovered researching this project. Whilst we hope that it will give the audience some content that they'd expect, it's safe to say that there'll be some gems that they wouldn't. Elton John, when he was a Radio 1 DJ, for example. Good afternoon, it's 3.30 on Good Friday, and uh, this is Elton John, EJ the DJ. We were going to thank David Hamilton, but we decided not to, as it's the thankless job that he's doing. We're going to have an hour and three quarters of good music coming up, starting with Jefferson Starship. One, two, three, four. It's Good Friday today. Elton John on Radio 1 there, yet another example of Apple Music poaching hot new presenter talent from Radio 1. (laughs) Maybe Elton as a DJ, who you can hear as part of a special hour of hidden gems on Radio 1 Vintage, is not that surprising. This will be, though. Taken from the Roundtable Review Show with David Kidd Jensen, whose guests to review the week's singles were, sometimes, more than just the latest passing pop star. Did, did, let me ask you a question. Did you guys always write your own stuff? I mean, from the beginning? Yeah, well, John and Paul wrote right from before we um, ever made How did you ever records. manage that? I don't know. They were clever little fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but we did record, um, you know, the first two albums we recorded, about half of uh, the albums were other people's songs. Like, we, we did a lot of cover versions of... Like we did Twist and Shout, the, oh, yeah. the Isley Brothers. Matchbox. Yeah. Matchbox. We did all kinds so of, you know, and, and some more obscure tunes. Well, we did Money too, like the... Did you miss Lizzie? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. We did a lot of uh, other people's songs in the early uh, days. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson chatting to George Harrison about the early days of the Beatles. Completely unique, completely extraordinary, and absolutely vintage Radio 1. 
The number of truly iconic musicians that have passed through the doors of the network has been staggering. Indeed, when we launched Radio 1 Vintage and released some material to the press, we received a call from our own legal team asking who on earth had recorded those unlicensed reversions of ABBA and Jimi Hendrix songs, to which we had to say, well, it was Jimi Hendrix and ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> Another obvious choice for Radio 1 Vintage is the presenter many ex-Radio 1 DJs we spoke to said was the most creative ever. I remember being in a group of BBC officials who were deciding what words to put with the jingles we were just going to buy from America when we first started at Radio 1. And they were all sat around in a huddle and it went something like this. Incredible as it sounds. Hobart, Hobart, BBC, Fun Time, Radio One, Fab Girl Man. How about this one? What? It's it's a merry-go-round of musical fun. Yes, Radio One. Uh, Miss Dyke, buddy, uh, would you take this corpse to Radio 3? Nobody will notice it there. <laughs> Kenny Everett, beloved by Steve Wright, Nicky Campbell, Bob Harris and Annie Nightingale, amongst others. And we know that because in order to do the job right, we have spoken to many ex-Radio 1 DJs. We recorded all of those interviews so that most of the shows on Vintage will start with the memories of either the presenters themselves or, in the case of presenters who are no longer with us, tributes from their colleagues and friends. John's 65th birthday was coming up and uh, I remember thinking to myself, what am I going to get for him? I always used to like to buy him an exquisite and quite extraordinary present. And um, I settled on the idea of a neon light a pink neon light, and the lettering would say, Dream Dad. I remember when it arrived, I was quite overwhelmed because it was so much bigger than I expected it to be. It was literally about three feet long. I took it up to Radio 1. I remember setting it up in the boardroom, and uh, he returned from the session at Maidaville, and I just pushed him through the door. <laughs> it was the last night that I ever saw him. I'm just, uh, I'm so glad that I had an opportunity to spell out how I felt about him one last time in uh, giant pink neon letters. Mary Ann Hobbs on John Peel. And we're pleased to announce to, here today at Next Radio that as well as short edits of those interviews forming each top of hour on Radio 1 Vintage, the full interviews, more than 30 of them, will be made available as podcasts published across that weekend. And what of that most admired of music tastemakers, John Robert Parker Ravenscroft? If ever there was a Radio 1 DJ for whom one hour was not enough, it was Peely. So as well as pulling together 60 minutes of John playing records and talking in between, uh, we're repeating the deeply moving documentary Teenage Dreams So Hard to Beat, first played in 2004. And I'm happy to say that letters have started coming in about The Undertone's excellent EP on Good Vibrations Records. Uh, uh, just this very day, I received letters from John Galway, not a hoop player, your dad does, uh, William Brown, I don't touch you much, uh, John DeFalb, and um, that's it actually, but here's the record, Undertones and Teenage Kicks, what a treat. I'll tell you what, you know, I've not done this for ages, but I think we ought to hear that again. Hold on a second, just talk among yourself. Listen this to when you listen to it this time, those of you who are familiar with the work of Loudon Wainwright, uh, last time I played it, the pig said, that lead singer sounds like Loudon Wainwright at times. It may sound a bit fanciful, but listen to it again, see what you think. An excuse for playing it twice. <laughs> that 
that is a mighty, mighty record, you know. Come the end of the year, that'll be battling with suspect device and shop of both sides as my record of the year, I think. John Peel playing Teenage Kicks twice on Radio 1 in 1978. A very special moment in the history of not only Radio 1, but also in the history of British popular music, which, as listeners to Radio 1 Vintage will realise, is frequently the same thing. Radio 1 Vintage will have specialist music shows. It will have daytime radio shows. It will have presenters you have loved and some that audiences may have forgotten they loved. It will also feature news because since its introduction in 1973, Newsbeat has broken news stories to tens of millions of listeners. Radio 1. Uh, the time is 2.31 with the news, Claire Bradley. The World Trade Center in New York is on fire after being hit by two passenger planes. Radio 1. News, 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 news. Two aeroplanes have crashed into the tallest buildings in New York, the World Trade Center. Smoke and flames are billowing from both towers. There have been two massive explosions. The side of one of the towers was blown out in a ball of flames. There are now several holes in the two towers. Smoke is pouring out in all directions. Some reports say one of the planes had been hijacked before it crashed. The BBC's Stephen Veach says those reports could point to some kind of terrorist attack. The great thing about diving headfirst into a radio archive is that you find not only shows you remember hearing yourself, but extraordinary shows from before you were born that are still fascinating to listen to today. Like this from Noel Edmonds, an early pioneer in in-flight radio. It's 7.16, 16 minutes past 7. If you've just awoke, welcome indeed to a special edition of The Breakfast Show. We've gone out and about, and at the moment we're in Gatwick in Surrey. But a little bit later on today, in fact, we hope by 9 o'clock, we got our fingers crossed for it anyway, we hope to be at the other end of the country. We're going to Aberdeen, and all the way, we're going to be presenting The Breakfast Show. It's always been my dream to be the only person on air in an aeroplane. I'm getting quite near to it, because we've got a, a very, very large aeroplane here with very few seats in it, and just a few people from the BBC and uh, in a very short time we hope to be taking off and going to uh, Aberdeen. Uh, excuse me Mr Edmonds, yes. I welcome you aboard your special flight. Uh, we should take off any time now. The captain will advise. Uh, don't hesitate to ask for anything you should need. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Noel Edmonds there from 1976. Uh, no points for the year but does anyone want to guess what the date of that broadcast was? Correct, have a mug. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Radio 1 Vintage will launch at 6am on the 30th of September <coughs> Tony Blackburn will be live on Radio 1 and Radio 2 Recreating that famous first broadcast And of course most people are familiar with the famous countdown 5, 4, 3, Radio 2, Radio 1, go Read by then controller Robin Scott But not so many people are familiar with the 5 minute truly corporate speech that preceded it. Check this out. All we're saying is squeaky shoes. Thank you, Paul, and good morning, everyone. In very little time now, it will be my pleasure and privilege to launch Radio 1 and 2. All of us here who have worked so hard during these past weeks have done so with two principal aims in view, to provide you with a better service of popular music <laughs> and a greater measure of choice. Because most of what Radio 1 and 2 are going to do will be live, it's not possible to rehearse and evaluate everything beforehand. Like a new pair of shoes, we shall be breaking the networks in until they fit properly. And we must crave your indulgence if the shoes squeak a bit, though we hope they won't. So wonderfully apologetic, setting the tone for the 50 years that follow. <laughs> For young music fans in the 60s, Tony Blackburn's voice was the sound of pop music. From 1978 onwards, however, the voice of rock music was altogether richer. Vance, the music vendor, and welcome to the Friday Rock Show. Later on in the program tonight, we have an extremely good 35 minutes and 40 seconds of a band called Great White. Also in the program, of course, we have the Rock War. And just looking down the list in front of me, lots of new stuff. Motley Crue, The Cross, Sanctuary, Thunder as well, their single. Something by Bruce Dickinson, Gary Moore, Riff, Robert Plant, Iron Maiden, Warrior Soul, 
something by Dio, and also Poison, who will start the show tonight. As always, more rock than you can handle. You've got to hold Joe back from playing air guitar during that <laughs> sequence. <laughs> Tommy Vance with the legendary Friday Night Rock Show, back for one hour, courtesy of Radio 1 Vintage. We promised not to talk about TV on the radio, but he crept in there anyway. Meanwhile, not every moment will be quite that slick. We have a new entry at number 26 from Darren Darren. Straight in the Radio 1 Top 40, position number 26. That's new entry, Darren Darren, and another called cool Planet Earth. Thank you very much for a couple of people who rang up, and I didn't realise that I said it, but I mispronounced the name. I said Darren Darren and Planet Earth, number 26, when of course it should be, as everybody knows, Duran Duran. When you're <coughs> doing a, a tight schedule progress, sometimes you mispronounce things. I do, I do apologise. None of us are too big to apologise. Sorry about that. Duran Duran, of course. Thank you very much for taking the trouble. Uh, meanwhile, back to the... None of us are too big to apologise. Tony Blackburn and Duran Duran, one of a handful of top 40 bloopers, which will feature in an hour called the best of the official chart. And yes, it will be on Sunday night, ending at 7 p.m. And yes, it will segue straight into Annie Nightingale's request show. Hi. Shall we give away another mug? Yes. <laughs> Anyone anyway, want to name the year that that blooper happened? 1981. Oh, there he is. <laughs> give that man a mug. This, there you go, sir. <laughs> By embracing shows from throughout the 50 years of this iconic station, Radio 1 Vintage has something to offer to audiences in their late 20s, their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, beyond. The station is not trying to create a reverence around shows just because they're old. <coughs> we hope to galvanise an audience just because these shows are great. And because moments like this from 2004 are every inch as important as moments from 1967. Well, I've been on the road for about two months now through various different guises. It's been great running into people who are all starting bands with their friends, coming up, giving demo tapes. Can you have a listen? Of course, we do our very best to listen to everything. Every couple of weeks, we sit down with 70 or 80 to go through it. We will listen. If you're ready, you will get played. If not, just keep writing, keep recording, keep giving them to us. This band is ready. They call it the Arctic... What? Arctic Monkeys? Check this out. Demo. Zane Lowe there playing Arctic Monkeys for the very first time and concluding our accidental E to Z of Radio 1 Vintage. And whilst pulling together a schedule of just 50 shows that fully represents the breadth of those 50 years has been as utterly agonising as picking your top 10 favourite records of all time. We believe that everyone will find something that surprises, something that delights and something that intrigues, along with a range of music that will make you smile and remember just how brilliant radio is. And most of all, whether you're a casual listener or whether you binge listen to the whole 50 hours, Radio 1 Vintage will inform, educate and entertain. And after 50 years, we're proud that Radio 1 still fulfills what it set out to do five decades ago. Thank you very much. Thank you.